10 things I wish I knew before starting worm composting. Now, let's just get the elephant out of the room. It's been years, okay, years, since my very first worm composting video, and then I took some time off of YouTube and kind of just got on with life. Life came along, blessed me with the experience of lots of worm composting, many failed attempts, many escaped worms, lots of tips, mostly failures, but hey, that's how we learn, right? Yeah, through messing up. So allow me to give you 10 things I wish I knew before starting worm composting so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did and get ahead. Like and subscribe. Number one, sieving. Okay, I have tried polystyrene boxes, a plastic drawer system, a fish tank, and the one thing I tried really hard to hack was some form of sieving concept. Just know this, if you are DIYing your own worm farm like I did, you need to somehow sieve out the good stuff. You can get chicken wire in a wooden frame system, or maybe even a, a large kitchen sieve, which is what I did with large holes. And you literally sieve each pile onto, say, a bed sheet or a plastic bag. You take your pick. And then you're aiming to sieve out all of the worms, the eggs, the uneaten food so that you can put everything back that isn't worm castings. And let me tell you, sieving out worm eggs was very difficult. I did end up trying to make a system which allowed me to collect all of the worm castings at the bottom of the tray. And I will dive more into what I'm currently using. And this will be like an overall thought in another video. But if you want to check it out, there is an Amazon link down below. And let me tell you, there has been times when I have been sieving out all of the good stuff, a couple of worm eggs, because these guys are tiny, have fallen through the sieve. And what actually happened is I had lots of worm eggs that ended up going into my house plants when I was putting all the nice juicy good stuff onto the houseplant soil. And when I came to replant some of my pots, there was worms at the bottom of my houseplant pots. So just keep that in mind. The second thing is some food can actually smell really bad. So too much food inside your worm bin will break down and you guessed it, it's gonna smell pretty gross if the worms are not eating it quick enough. But here's my story, which I'll never do again. I once chopped up the cutoffs from some broccoli, you know, the leaves, the stalk, the really hard bit no one eats, placed this inside the drawer for the worm food, came back a weekend later and I came back to my whole apartment smelling like farts. And it took me a long time, let me tell you, to figure out where that smell came from. It was like I was almost haunted by a ghost with flatulence. So just be warned, if you're leaving food inside your worm bin for a couple of days, waiting for the worms to do its thing and have a munch, it might release an odor. Number three, where you will store your bin. Now, I have spent a lot of these past years in apartments, so I struggled on those super hot days where the weather is like crazy. If you're in the UK, we have like four days a year where the weather is like 40,000 degrees hot and we don't have air cons. If I couldn't find a way to cool myself down, there's no hope for the guys inside a worm bin. Now, another year I was in a different apartment and I had a loft space at the very top of a flat so I could store all of the worms up there and they were in a nice cold situation. If you have your bin inside, please keep that in mind. And also bins outdoors, they go through some extreme cold temperatures. And as you guessed it, the worms get sluggish the colder they are and obviously below freezing point, they will die. So try and remember, bring your worm farm indoors if you can into a conservatory. And if you don't have a conservatory, be very mindful of where you keep your worm bin. And also avoid carpeted areas if you can. Yeah, don't put your worm bin on a carpet. I once lived in a property that had a very teeny tiny kitchen and then a huge dining room built next to it. Once the worms escaped, it can happen if you're just setting up a worm bin from scratch. You do get some guys which try their lucky escape and this happened. And I had the most, well, a landlord special carpet. So as you can imagine, the pile is just ridiculous and it has really huge little threads inside the carpet and worms were just crawling their way through these hooped threads on the carpet. So when I tried to rescue them, it was such a job of trying to unweave them from the actual thread of the carpet. So please keep that in mind. If you can, please don't put them on a carpeted area. Try to keep towards tile laminate flooring or put a big top oil and sheet down if you are gonna keep them inside a house. Pet and child free areas. This kind of goes without saying. Kids absolutely love playing with worms. It's the funnest thing they could do in all creation. So they will touch them a lot, they will pick them up. So if you do have a weekend where you make the worm farm with your children, 
it's going to be pretty hard to get them to keep their digits out of the worm box. So keep this in mind, try and keep the worms high up somewhere where they won't meddle with them because if they happen to knock the top of the worm bin, you can stress them out. It gives them a chance to escape if they do get stressed and it's just a whole pandemonium. And if you have little tiny pets like I do, I once had a situation when I just started looking after this new little puppy that I had and she was very, very inquisitive of the bin, which is this one here that I've been using. And she knocked the lid off because she wanted to take a sniff inside because gross stuff is amazing to dogs, right? And this was just after the summer when all of my worms had died. So it was a new bin situation going on. She took the lid off and worms just escaped. So it was uh, a gross dog banquet for a while. So yeah, keep that in mind. Next up, have lots of patience. This is not a quick job. You know, I'll get worms on Monday, feed them Tuesday, get my worm castings on a Friday. It takes a long time to figure this all out. The more knowledge you have, the easier it is, of course. And it's all about making sure you don't overfeed the worms, you keep them in the right environment, you have the right bedding set up, they are stress-free, everything's fine and dandy, and you've got the ratios of greens and browns correct. And what a lot of people forget is worms don't eat that much. So I'll go into that in a separate tip. Worm death. It kind of happens to the best of us. You will probably get the whole process wrong a couple of times and then you will need some more worms. Now, speaking of worms, a super common question I always get is, where do you get your worms from? Now, if you are blessed with a fishing tackle store close to you, close by, awesome. Go there, pick up some red wigglers, not the worms inside your normal garden soil. They won't work. But if you don't have that benefit, you can order them online like I did. Now, I always order mine through Amazon with a company called Yorkshire Worms. Now, who knew we would actually advance this far in society that I can get myself a bucket of worms off Amazon with next day delivery? You might be a lucky person that sets up their bin and you don't have a worm death. Now, you will get a couple of guys that will escape and they will sadly die and shrivel up on the car carpet or on the floor, whatever, that just happens. But if you have an extreme escape where, I don't know, there's too many worms inside the bin, there's, it's very cramped in there, they want to leave, then you may get a bit of a worm death if they all hit the floor and, you know, dry up. It happens, it happens to a lot of us. It's one of those things. Please be prepared that if that does happen, just means you've got a lot of a lot more learning to do. Briefly touched on this one, but they do not eat as much as you think they would. The internet kind of makes out that you could make a Sunday dinner, put all your clippings inside the worm composting bin, and then you would have worm castings a week later. If you had a huge worm farm, that would work. But if it's just you inside an apartment and you don't have a garden, you're going to be pretty limited. They can only eat their body weight of food in one day. So let's say you've ordered yourself 100 grams of worms. You can only feed them 100 grams of fruit peelings, otherwise the ratio gets off and then bad things happen. It smells, the worms can get sick, and in worst case scenario, they will die. This eating rule only happens when the worms are happy in their environment and they are feeling calm. And you don't feed them lots of food straight away, you slowly build it up in small increments. So what I noticed is I had lots of cuttings, fruit peelings, vegetable peelings that I wasn't actually using up quick enough that I had to actually blend up in a blender, put in inside a box and then keep that inside the freezer because I just wasn't going through that as quick as I thought I would. The escape. Yeah, I just mentioned it. Worms will escape if they don't like the home you have built them. If you lack that knowledge and the experience, they will leave. And it's pretty cheeky, right? They live rent free in your home that you made with your sweat, blood and tears, and then they just decide to pack up and go. But jokes aside, this really does happen. It's quite common until people know what they're doing. Until you get the ratios right, the feeding habit right, things will be okay. And if they're not, they will escape. You do get the odd worm that plans their escape and you will always find you're picking up that odd worm from time to time, putting him back in the bin. That's just, you know, you do get some that just like to go out on an escapade and have an adventure. So if you have a worm farm in your kitchen because you have no garden, keep this in mind. You will possibly every couple of weeks stumble across a little worm that's made its way into the dining room. Now, all the reasons for them escaping, and this will be another video, is that they literally grow out of their home. We may want to build them a box that's this big with a couple of tiers, but if there's lots of worms, they will outgrow that. They have babies. If they feel cramped, they will try to leave. And at this point, you need to consider whether you need to add a new tray or get a whole new bin completely. Other bugs. Ugh. 
Yeah, they will find their way into your worm bin. You can count on that. You'll get springtails, mites, fruit flies, gnats. If your worm farm is outside, you can expect a lot more critters to get inside because obviously nature's in abundance out there. Inside an apartment, you are prone to springtails and fruit flies. Now, this is a video that is long overdue and I will document that eventually, but I'm only just over the situation that happened three years ago with a huge infestation of gnats. Mm -hmm. It was tough work. They literally got into all the house plants, and yeah, there are some do's and some don'ts to avoid unwanted critters, but for ease, don't overfeed them. Cover new food with torn paper, coconut choir, and eggshells so that you can disguise that smell of fresh food. And then quarantine off, very important, any plants that you bring in from outside the garden or buy from a hardware store, wherever you get your plants from, make sure they have their own quarantined room for a couple of days to make sure they're not bringing inside a fly infestation. And the last tip, hard work. Finding that balance is tough. You need a bit of determination. You know, you need to have some information to make sure you are successful and you need to have the time to check up on the critters weekly. It's obviously not as much work as owning a dog, but there's a lot of trial and error and you have to know what they need at different times. You need to be able to measure your pH levels, have the right diet for them, know what to do if things go wrong so you can intervene pretty quickly so things don't get too chaotic and also understand if you want to have them outside or inside so i will give you some more information later on but let me know what you thought of this video it has been a long time i'm so sorry it took many years but i'm back now you won't get rid of me and i'll see you very soon take care